Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back. Uh, we are here after Season 3 Set 3 has dropped. Um, and today I'm going to show you guys how to finish both Team Affinity and the monthly program super fast. Um, you can combine the two, save yourself a lot of time, a lot of hassle, get them both done at the same time. Um, but your team should be looking something like this. Uh, if it's not looking something like this, you're probably doing a disservice to yourself. Um, I would be trying to use Set 3 cards or a lot of cards from the same team to try to knock out some of those Team Affinity goals. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what I would do in what order here in just a second. Uh, just wanted to show you guys why you should be prioritizing this, why you should be trying to knock these out um, ASAP as soon as possible. Um, so uh, these are all from the Team Affinity Path. Some of them may not look like Team Affinity cards traditionally, but this is the Team Affinity Path. All these cards are from here. Um, there's some decent cards in here. Uh, if you saw the tier list video yesterday, uh, I went over a lot of them. Joey Gallo is really solid. Um, Center guard is not terrible. Soroka is not bad. Trey Turner is basically the 99. Um, I mean, there, there's some solid cards in here, not to mention um, some of these 94s are cool little budget cards also, but uh, would not be the reason why I would recommend you doing all of Team Affinity. Um, so you see, you have kind of these stepping stone bosses. This Frey Freeman's cool. Boosts all of the Team Affinity cards. Uh, same for Strider. Uh, this McClanahan's pretty mid, but you can probably make them work if you want to. Same for Arias. Um, this Matt Olson is where these cards start getting decent, and Team Affinity really becomes worth your time. You can see we're at 115. Uh, like 85 max power against righties, like 115 like contact or er, power against lefties when he gets some parallels on them. 111 clutch. I mean, 53 speed, diamond defense at first. Like this Matt Olson is pretty good. Um, he's gonna struggle on legend against lefties probably, but other than that, that card's great. Uh, Jose Ramirez is probably the new best second baseman in the game. I uh, can't believe they gave him 92 fielding. That might be the highest on a Jose Ramirez card ever. You know his swings fire. You know he's got like great quirks. Uh, J Ram's always pretty cracked. Um, Corbin Carroll, right? A lot of people like that 99 Future Stars that we got, or Welcome to the Show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this card's even better. He is absolutely great. Um, still doesn't have any quirks, unfortunately, but has a good swing. Uh, and it's super fast out there. So you get all of those cards, three of which I think are extremely usable cards, just for finishing Team Affinity. That is not to mention that these cards are the main contributing factor to knocking out these uh, these set three collection choices. Um, there are people out there that already have one of these um, somehow. <laughs> Season's been out for three days. Uh, I saw Rebel already has Adley Rutschman. I'm sure there's some other people that uh, have already taken some other ones. Acuna will be my first pick, and then it will probably be Adley and then Digo. Uh, Dehigo looks absolutely awful, to be honest. Um, but these other two are absolutely phenomenal cards. They're great. Um, Adley has quirks. Acuna obviously has quirks, has a great swing. Uh, but that, those two are why you're doing Team Affinity. Uh, you're doing those two. You're getting this Jackie, who's a good card in his own right. This Hilton Smith is trash. Um, but also you're working towards this Austin Riley, who looks very similar to his Lightning card from last year. Uh, I mean, this card is great. With Diamond Defense, I don't think we've ever gotten Austin Riley with Diamond Defense. He's going to have 83 speed, or 82 speed, super fractured. Uh, basically max contact against both sides. Really good power against righties. Uh, max against lefties, max clutch, has quirks. I mean, this card is pff, nasty. That's a nasty card. This is a right-handed third baseman that competes with Chipper Jones. I think he will be a similar level of hitter to Chipper Jones. Um, that's insane. I did not expect to get a card like this. He's basically another collection reward. Maybe that's why Dehigo is so bad, because Austin Riley is basically another collection reward. Um, so... How are you going to go about getting these cards? What's the best way of doing it? Uh, that's what we're going to get into right now. You can see I've not made a lot of progress right now. I'll be honest. I have not played the game too much. Um, but with that being said, you did see I already have the Lightning Shohei. Um, so it does not take very long to get the monthly program done. Um, this is the order that I would do it in. So I would come to your monthly program. I would knock out every moment in here. 
Um, and then if you want to do these collections, if you've been keeping up with your tops now, you can do this collection. If not, there is an exchange here. I would not recommend doing the exchange. But if you have some set one cards that you just don't want to go through the trouble of selling because they are all pretty much worthless now, um, then I understand if you just want to exchange them, save yourself a little bit of time. Uh, but it's not a lot of time because we're going to get into um, these, Team Affinity. So uh, it is pretty much a traditional way. You've got your moments that don't contribute at all. Uh, the only time I really touch the moments is if I'm like one or two moments away from getting a pack. That would get me more XP in this path. Um, but that does not. Your captains need stats, not XP. Um, the flashbacks need XP. Um, and then the bosses get XP. But there's also a repeatable, very similar to the last program uh, with all the incognitos. So that's cool. You got your mini season voucher exchanges. You've got your traditional exchanges. Uh, this collection doesn't do anything. I don't know why that's necessarily there. Um, you got your showdowns, and then you have your conquests. And March, October, if you're crazy enough to go do that. So, um, how I would approach this is I would make a team of only the monthly players. Um, the ones that you get anyway from doing the moments and any of the exchanges that you want. And that would come to single player. I would go to conquest. Um, and I would start knocking those out. Within one of these conquests, you should probably get the monthly program done. Depends on how well you pitch, how well you hit, what difficulty you play on. Um, but in general, it's 10 games. I imagine you can probably average 500 PXP per game. If not, that can bleed into the second one. Um, and that will get your show act. That will get you that uh, June monthly program done pretty easily. Then I would probably pivot into the showdowns. I would knock out all these showdowns, um, make a team of however many Team Affinity uh, players you got from doing the other map. You can see I picked Tatis and Zunino and uh, Wilmer Flores and a couple pitchers, um, and I'm kind of cycling through those. Use those to finish the other two conquest maps, and after you finish that, um, you're going to go into mini seasons, everybody's favorite mode in the game, and you're going to play this Team Affinity 3 mini season. Uh, you're going to make a roster out of those Team Affinity cards. You can see I do not have too many at all right now. I've got Tatis, got a couple of the pitchers. Um, it didn't put into Nino or anybody like that. But uh, customize that. Make sure you have your new set three ones in there. Uh, and just start getting PXP with them. Start getting the stat missions done with them. Um, and then every five games in many seasons, you'll get a voucher or two, which is a decent amount of progress. Um, and then winning, making the playoffs gets you some vouchers. Uh, winning the semifinals gets you some vouchers. And winning the mini season World Series gets you uh, quite a few vouchers. So uh, basically just rinse and repeat that until you're done with Team Affinity or you're like 80%. I'd say if you can get all these to 80%, you can probably finish them naturally throughout the course of the season uh, just by playing with cards. Uh, some of these divisions are kind of rough. Like both central divisions, there's not too many cards in the game that are good from the, those divisions. So I can see those being kind of bad. You might want to finish these first. But in general, there's pretty good meta cards from the other divisions uh, that over the course of, you know, the rest of the season, you will probably knock out enough of those repeatable PXP goals to uh, just finish it naturally that way. Um an added bonus is you will probably get a ton of program XP by doing this. You can see uh, I'm what, I'm done with the monthly program and I've only finished one of the conquest maps and played like two games on one of the other conquest maps. Haven't touched the showdowns, haven't not touched many seasons whatsoever, and I'm at ninety thousand. So I mean, you multiply that three times, I would be at pretty much my boss pack right now. Uh, you see that reflected in their price? They're pretty in the toilet right now for. Uh, you know, where those probably should be for two days after the program came out. But it is what it is. You can get that John Donaldson easily um, and start kind of working your way up the XP path. Uh, chase packs are in the XP path now. That's a big dub. Um, boss packs are now one of the gold uh, goals. So they took that feedback to heart. You can get boss packs semi-regularly semi now. Um, so that should be a good chunk of change. Uh, this is probably the best season to max out the XP path. 
And yeah, guys, that's it. That's how I would be approaching Season 3, knocking out Team Infinity, knocking out the monthly program. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if this was helpful at all, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.